Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Alyssa. Welcome to the family. Um, today I will be doing kind of like a story time YouTube video. Um, I know a lot of you may know this about me, but I did have brain surgery. And some of you don't know this about me, but I did have brain surgery. Um, so yeah, I will just basically be doing like a story time about how that all played out. So, um, it all started... My mom is way better at telling this than I am because I, well, I was diagnosed with short-term memory after that. So, I don't have, like, the best memory of what happened. And if you ask me what happened in the hospital specifically, I don't really remember. I don't, I didn't know that I was going to have surgery when I was going to have it. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but, like, I, I don't know. I just don't remember a lot that happened. But I do know from hearing other people's stories and stuff, I do know what did happen to me. So I will try to the best of my ability to tell you guys that. So basically, I went into the, I was admitted into the emergency room off of just, like, a headache. And, well, that night, my mom thought maybe it's a migraine headache because those do run in my family. So my mom gave me, I believe it was, etc um she gave me something super strong that i wanted more of in like it was a prescribed pill um she gave it to me and i shouldn't have asked for more after like the next day but i asked for more within like two hours so at that point my mom knew something was wrong so she took me to the to the emergency room this was like at what, 3 in the morning maybe? I don't really know. But um, somewhere there. So she took me to the emergency room and walking in, I felt like I needed to throw up. So I went to the side and there was like a little potter there. So I threw up in the dirt. And I, all I remember, I remember so specifically that ants got on my blanket. Because I was so cold that I took a blanket with me. And ants got on my blanket. I was so mad. I remember that. I do remember that. Anyways. So, um, she took me to the emergency room, and in the emergency room, the doctors were kind of unsure what was going on, and I know there was one doctor that kind of felt an uncomfortable with sending me home, so he was like, you know what, we're not specialized in children, so <clears throat> just to be safe, we're going to send her to... Um, Children's Hospital of LA because you know they're they have a more team that specializes in this so they were gonna send me to that but then when they called all the beds were full so I didn't go to that hospital but they were like okay this is a little further but you know they have more of a better team so we're gonna try to send you here what about a Children's Hospital of Orange County so we're like at this point my parents were like you know what whatever so, um, I got sent there, um, I think an ambulance took me, um, all I know is that every single medical person that I came across was very attractive, and I know well, maybe some of these medical people are going to watch, it's okay, you were very attractive, you should know that, anyways, I was like 12, anyways, so, um, yeah, I got sent there through an ambulance, and then when I got there, um, I don't really remember that day. I think my mom has said that I was in pain with that headache for around eight days, I believe, and they were giving me medicine on top of medicine, and nothing would kind of take that pain away, and no one really knew what was going on, and... I think the doctors thought it was just a migraine headache and so one of the neurologists was like okay just treat her for this and then send her home and so then they were treating me for it and none of the pain really went home went away and so my mom was outside and that neurologist that like 
said sent her home saw my mom that neurologist was like hey what are you still doing here and then um my mom was like you know what she's just not getting better and like she was just crying I think to the doctor like she's not getting better like I don't know what to do I don't know what's wrong with her and so the neuro the neurologist went in and she looked at me she did like her little like test like you know with the light follow the light with your eyes anyways she did those tests and um I think I was kind of like what's the word I don't really remember the word, but the, you know, when I was like, I didn't know where I was. I don't remember that word, but I was like, I didn't know where I was. And so, um, at that point, the neurologist was like, oh my God, like something's wrong. Um, let's send her up for one more MRI. So, um, they sent me up for one more MRI and in that MRI, they realized that the metal from my braces, because I had braces three times, that's a different story, but the third time I had braces, no, the second time I had braces, so they realized that they, that I had, the metal in my braces was distorting the image from the back of my brain, which is where I had the inflammation, um, and so then, um, when they saw that, they yanked out my braces, um, then they sent me up to the surgical room and they performed brain surgery. They shaved like probably like this much of my hair off. And I don't know if you could see it, but my scar is right there. Um, so yeah, but um, I did have a brain surgery at that point and they put in a temporary ED, EVD, EDV, EVD, a temporary EVD, um, which is a temporary shunt. And it's basically just, I think, a like little tube thing that drains out all the water because I did have an excessive amount of water in my brain. So they did that and I believe in the hospital there were little things that happened like um, they gave me certain medicines that I had allergic reactions to. So, oh, uh, I'm allergic to Augmentum. I was allergic to Augmentum before I was born and then Vancomycin. It either gave me dystonia or red man syndrome. Re uh, I'm allergic to vancomycin and compazine. So basically one of them, I don't know which one, but dystonia is like when all your muscles tighten up. And like my mom thought I was the exorcist. That's how she describes it. Like all my muscles tightened up and tightened up. And so like it was just, this crazy thing and the doctor had to massage my neck it was just it was crazy and then red man syndrome I don't really remember but um I think my mom said that my whole skin like all of my skin turned red so that's basically like some of the little things that happened in the hospital but um yeah after I had brain surgery I was basically in rehab for maybe, I don't know, four months after that, in HAB, uh, in HAB, in, um, in, in, in house, rehab, I don't know, but like live where I lived there, and I lived in a facility, and I had rehab every day, so I had that, and then I had outpatient rehab, inpatient rehab, outpatient, that's what the words are, so I had outpatient rehab for a couple months after that, um, basically where I just had to go I think once a week and so you know a lot of those people changed they really did change my life because like this the person that I am is kind of like the person I would not have been if I never had brain surgery like they shaped me into who I am like they helped me walk helped me learn how to walk helped me learn how to talk you know I've always been like a genuine kind of person but you know they just helped me relearn a lot of things um, basically my brain went back down to a, like a five-year-old, so my mom had to re-teach re me how to, like, be respectful. I'm not very good at showing emotions, so when I'm super excited about things, um, I don't, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't really show that I'm super excited about things, 
um, when I'm su- well, I do cry a lot, so when I'm super sad, I think that does show, but, um, I'm, like, overly emotional. I have, um, they're called petite mall seizures, they're not, like, grand seizures, where, like, you know, like, took those crazy sheet seizures. I have just the seizures where, like, my eyes go back and forth, um, so, yeah. Uh, there's like a lot of things that have happened after the brain surgery um, that have like affected me and like my everyday life. I know a big thing is like school. I'm not very good at school. I think before, um, before I had my brain surgery, I always had like A's and B's. And then after my brain surgery, um, I started getting like C's and D's. But those C's and D's were always like A's and B's to my parents because you know, I did have a learning, learning disability, so, um, yeah, I mean, those were, their A's and B's, and my math, I believe, well, what my, what it really affected mainly was that, um, uh, my secondary language was kind of lost, so my Spanish, that's why my Spanish, I used to be so fluent in Spanish, so good at Spanish, that's all I spoke. It wasn't my primary language, but it was basically like my primary language. And then after my brain surgery, like, I can speak Spanish, it's just very chopped up. And like, uh, my parents like to call it pocha, so like I'm very like, you know, it's just my, my Spanish is very like chopped up. So, um... It affected my secondary language and it also affected my math. So going into freshman year, I was in accelerated algebra and they dropped me down to normal al algebra, but I forgot all of my times tables. So I kind of had to start from the bottom. Like, um, I just was never really good at math anyways, but it, my brain surgery kind of made me worse at math. So, um, which I'm not thankful for but kind of thankful for that i did drop in math because that's where i met aj so things are meant to be the way they play out but anyways um yeah those are some of the things that have happened to me so i still struggle with my balance it did affect my balance and my coordination so if you see me walk now if you know me personally um and you see me walk and pay attention i'll walk like this i'll walk straight and then i'll start leaning towards you and then I'll walk back. So they say I have something called the drunken effect, the natural drunken effect. So like when you when you're drunk, you kind of like stumble everywhere. Um, I have that naturally without being drunk. So it is recommended that I do not drink because you know having what I have and then adding alcohol to it would just make it ten times worse. So um, you know I can't live my life like a normal person would live their life but that's totally okay because I'm okay I don't know what that noise was but I'm totally okay um so yeah like I was saying I can't live my life as a normal person would live their life but that is totally okay because I have accepted what I have gone through and you know you keep living life God plans the way things go in life and he has a path for everyone so it's totally okay and you know I just have other better things going for me so yeah that is what I have been through um kind of like a story from what I remember from my brain surgery because I do forget a lot of things like I said in the beginning of the video but I hope that helped kind of a lot of people know what I have been through that don't know what I have gone through um so yeah I think this is the end of my story so yeah please give this a thumbs up if you guys loved this video and if you guys want to see more of me then please hit that subscribe button um leave a comment down below of like kind of what the kind of videos you guys would love to see and yeah Follow me on all the social medias. I will post them down below. And I love you guys so much. Bye. I'm editing the video and I realized I forgot to say a really important aspect that's a part of the story. 
Um, I was, they never found out the main diagnosis of what happened to me, but my secondary diagnosis is that they diagnosed me with meningitis, encephalitis, hydrocephalitis, then I think another itis. I don't know. All these itises. So yeah, um, those are my diagnoses. And I'm also realizing that I'm saying a lot of things backwards and wrong. So I have apologize for that but i think you guys are getting my main kind of points but yeah so yeah i love you guys